We're live. This is Ted Hicks, Late Night Parents. Uh, two of my bros are in, in the house tonight. Um, Tony D, how you doing, brother? Chilling, man. What's happening? What's happening? Mr. B, JoJo. Jojo. Is here. We, we usually get a, a monthly appearance from JoJo. Mr. B, what's going on, brother? You're on mute. You're on oh, mute. My bad. No. Nope. My bad. My bad. I'm good. How y'all fellas doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, a lot of news and notes. Um, I guess right at the gate, you know, the craziness that's happening in Memphis with those five officers that um, brutally beat that young man who's 29 years old. I, I, I will tell you this much. I've never seen this move for justice so swiftly. Mm. Um, we've seen faces on TVs, across the internet, all the above. I mean, it's just an ugly situation. Um, so yep. there's, there's too much to broach on that topic. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking the video, Joe, we were talking earlier, the video is going to get, was supposed to get released today or tomorrow or? They're talking about Friday. It'll be Friday evening. They're supposed to release that tape. So news I'm not dump. sure. If, yeah, I'm not sure if folks is ready to see that tape, man. News uh, dump. And then all hell is going to break loose. Yeah. You know, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, and, 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 but, um, I, I, I I want to put that in the parking lot because yeah. I'm sure we're going to be talking about that That's a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, a little bit more. Um, Tone, question for you primarily. You sure. attended the HBCU. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of talk over the last three, four weeks, maybe six weeks, initially with Deion Sanders leaving Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You got Ed Reed. Uh, who had a cup of coffee in Florida. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, I'm just reading just back and forth, back and forth, and I'm like, wait, Ed Reed got signed. Wait, he didn't get signed. Wait, they're working on a contract. Wait a minute. They're not extending the contract. They pulled the contract. He's on social media. A president's firing or interim president's firing back. All the above. Tone, you've lived the life of HBCU. Not per se, Bethune Cook, um, but just your experience. The finances at HBCUs are not the best. For those of you who may be old enough to remember, we had a protest at Tuskegee in the early 90s, protesting tuition hikes. When it was near the end, we actually had a chance to sit down with some of the administration. They broke down the pie graph, the money that comes in, and then what it takes to maintain the university. From what I saw, and this will be my interpretation of what they showed us, the tuition we send isn't enough to maintain a lot of these campuses. It has to come from donations, has to come from grants. Um, Tuskegee is a private school. Right. Uh, I think it's federally supported. They get a lot of federal grants. I don't blame them for not wanting to give it up. I know I heard stories about when Bill Cosby wanted to donate, when Lionel Richard wanted to donate. They wanted to donate it to something specific. But when they were going to take the donations, they had to go to a general fund. This was the rumor we was hearing. So when the coaches go there and they protesting what's going on, Dion was doing big things with Jackson State. Jackson State, you ain't hear him say nothing but just football. Ed Reed went down and went ballistic with what he was seeing. I know what he's trying to do. I know how it's coming across. All HBCUs need more support than what they're getting. And I'm not even talking down about the people who are donating or contributing. The money that we want to send or that the alumni want to send or anybody wants to send, they want it to go somewhere specific because they know what the complaints are, dorms, facilities, better food, uh, help with the books and everything. You won't get grants, you're going to get scholarships. Not everybody gets grants and scholarships, straight up. And people want to help folks, but you got to watch how you allocate your money. The, the the economic allocation is where the issue is from what I'm seeing. So I know what Ed Reed was doing. I know what Dion's trying to say. Take it easy, just work it. 
take it easy, just work it. You're going to bring the support just by being there. Ed Reed didn't like what he saw. And it went off from there. That's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. Well, I did a little bit of research on it. And the usual amount percentage for alumni is 4 to 5% mm-hmm. uh, that they take through the, for the year. Mm-hmm. And I'm told HBCUs is touching 1%. Which doesn't help. That doesn't help what I just said. It was right. more, What I saw was more than that. And that's a shame. Okay. That's a shame. And mind you, a lot of kids are going to college on scholarships, grants, or ROTC. Right. You know what it costs for you to go to college out of your mom and daddy pocket? Yeah. And we getting the plus loans for our kids. I did it for my older son. I'm paying on it. I told him, you know, Jason going to be the same way. Most people got a savings to send their kid to college, plain and simple. Plain and simple. If you can afford it. And most parents can't afford it, so these kids are in here for whatever specific reason they're trying to do right. It's it's a big economic circle, and the the details and the specifics would drive people nuts. Like I said, I kind of remember some of what I saw. That was 30 years ago. Mm. But when I saw what they were telling us, I was like, okay, I see what's going on now. Maybe it was BS, but something about it made sense. Take how much tuition costs. Take the number of students that's in there. Add that up. Then look at your campus. See how much it costs to fix everything. You're going to start putting numbers together. See, people like to have conversations, don't put numbers together. That's where the confusion is. And everybody want to talk about you got to do something. We got to do something. We got to do something. Who is we and how are we going to do it? All the conversations we have on the internet, we need to do something. Somebody need to think of something. You to somebody. What are we going to do? So everybody out there going to every HBCU out there, what we going to do? I'm listening. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, hey, Sadie. Joe, any comments on that? Or did Tony basically um, touch all the bases on it? Nah, he touched the bases pretty much, man. Pretty much. HBCUs, they, they need some help of some sort, you know. And uh, people try to help and do their best, but, you know. It... <laughs> It's disrespectful to say what we're doing ain't yeah. enough. Yeah. And I would say we as in those who have been to schools and wanted to contribute. That's uh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sadie, how you doing? Like, big ups to everybody out there doing whatever you can. Right. The rest of us need to kick yeah. in. Tuskegee yeah. has a lot of legends. Alabama State has a lot of legends. Bill Cookman got a lot of legends. Jackson State got a lot of legends. Mississippi Valley State got a lot of legends. Morris Brown got a lot of legends. Clark, Clark got a I mean... You know what I'm saying? And I, I hate to put it to you like this, but a bunch of us that, well, a bunch of people that graduate, because I didn't, I ain't going to front. I went, but I didn't graduate. Go with, y'all go ahead. I'll, I'll holler at y'all in this conversation. I'll be free tomorrow night. I went, but I didn't graduate. Those of us who making money, or those of us who are doing something, we can only give so much. A lot of the, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, other predominant universities got people with more money, giving back more, putting more things in place. Go to an HBCU campus, go to another campus. Tell me the difference you see. I know what I saw between Tuskegee and Auburn. Mm. Got it. Mm. Got it. We're going to see how um, this situation with Ed Reed and the interim president and everything else plays out. I was watching some stuff on um, Roland Martin. Yes. The Digital Daily Show. Um, You know, because he's been having conversations and he wants to have a, like a town hall and you know continue to push this topic further um something that was finalized um you know Joe and I are New Yorkers Tony is a you know honorary New Yorker native New Yorker native <laughs> native native. <laughs> native yeah this week the um the you know recently defeated Buffalo Bills, mm. yeah, finalized Man. their new stadium with New York, mm. and I know it was um, how do I say it? It bothered me a little bit with the amount of public funds, and I know this happens everywhere. Whenever there's a stadium, you know they hold 
the whoever the governor, the mayor, whoever, um, the comptroller hostage, and they basically say, "You want a football stadium here, or you want us to stay here? Then you're gonna have to pay up." Mm-hmm. So, 1.4 billion dollar stadium, 850 million in public funds. Jojo, that's your dollars and mine being funneled to the Buffalo Bill Stadium. I mean, I guess we should go to the stadium. <laughs> we lived. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our money spent there. Might as well take the trip and enjoy it there, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> so our tax dollars, Joe, yeah. are going there. Um, I don't know how many people from Long Island or from the BX actually go to the Buffalo Bill Stadium on a regular? It's a good question. You know, so, yeah. eh, you know, um, I don't it's know. Crazy. It's a crazy sight to see. It's really Yeah, it, it is. And, and when you think about it, Buffalo is one of the poorest cities in America. The lowest wages across the board. Yeah. Homelessness. Poverty, but there's 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 dollars in his funds for a stadium because people love the NFL. I won't harp on this too much because there's nothing we could do because the governor passed it. Because I mean, ultimately, she was if she didn't pass it, they would move. Yeah, you know, yeah. and she wouldn't have got her first full term. So um, I don't know. Um, other note I'm going to say is, and we're going to wait and see, Kyrie Irving is already talking about his people are talking to the Nets. They're ready to sit down for an extension. He's talking about the bag, four years, $200 million. And I love Kyrie Irving. I really do. Uh, I I just I don't know. Yeah, if four years, two hundred million dollars for the Nets. Four years, two hundred million. He's like he's ready to talk extension. I don't know if the Nets are talking extension, ready to talk it yet. But four years, two hundred million. I mean, all they're going to tell him is he got to play ball. That's what it is. Yeah, he got to play. Got to play ball. He got to play. Get out of get the distractions out the way and play ball, man. I mean, he was putting in publicity dollars. Yeah, I'm quite sure he made much of that. So I can't front on that. But they want him to play ball. And KD probably gonna stay if he stay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, They ball. Build everybody around those two. Both of them are hard to beat. What's up, Helen? Just hey, Helen. How you doing? Both of them are hard to beat. So, I mean. I think they got a deal, but they're gonna look at his contribution over the negative publicity, even though yeah. negative yep. publicity makes money. Well, he's been on his best behavior, I'm telling you. And I don't know if that's because I mean, of course, it's because of the contract year. Mm-hmm. But you know, e- ever since the last dust up with him sending that link for that video that's being sold on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. yeah, you know. I don't, I don't see it. no one push back on Amazon. They surely push back on him. Mm. Um, mm. Yep. Yep. Mm. We'll leave it there. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you want to talk football? Any predictions? We got two games left for the big game. Joe, who do you have for? AFC and for NFC. Oh man. Uh <laughs> I'm beyond that's two tough games, bro. I really um I don't know. I, I really thought the Bills had it in the bag last week. Right. And that was a whole that was just mind blowing. Like wow. <laughs> um San Fran looks to be a dominant force right now. I don't know, man. You, you question Brock Purdy, but Brock Purdy has put in the work with the good squad. Uh, right. The defense is strong. Offensive, 
your offensive uh, keys are there. You, they were smart enough to get Christian McCaffrey because I don't know, man. Regardless of what is happening, that guy gets his, his, his he gets his his things in, man. Like yo, blockbuster. So it's just like blockbuster maneuver. How do you do that? Is beyond me, man. You got Philly in, the, in in there, and Philly's monstrous defense has arised again. Jalen Hurts is putting up numbers, man. Yeah, that young boy, what's his name? The running back there they got. Um, not run, not young boy, but um, I forgot the running back in the Eagles. What's his name? I forgot homeboy's name. I don't forget his name. Hold on. Wrong one. I'm about to look right now. I forgot. It's at the it's at the tip of my head, man. Ah, dang. But fire. But then again, you have the Bengals here. And Bengals have showed up. Hey, what a brick. Um, you got the Bengals. And low key, the Bengals is a team that I kind of wanted. I was like, man, on our fantasy league, Joe Mixon got me numbers, man. Yes. Thank you so yes. much, Joe. Yes. Elijah Joe Holy Mixon Field. has been it's a pff. Elijah it's Holyfield and Noel Devine. There you go. The combination, yeah. combination has yeah. been pretty swell. Right. Um, Joe Mixon, Burrow, T. Higgins. Oh my God. And what's homeboy's name? Um, oh my god, how I forget his name. Jamal Chase. There you go. Jamal Chase, yeah. Mixon, I'm not Mixon, but uh Joe Burrow's really showed himself, man, this season. Oh, yeah. That man's took a hell of a lot of sacks, man. But who you got game. The Bengals got game. The Bengals want to go back for revenge. I don't blame. Yep. Yeah. Um, the Eagles were my preseason pick. But the 49ers, okay. they, but once they got Christian McCaffrey, I was like red alert. Red alert. And yeah. the team will rally around the quarterback. Brock Purdy is their quarterback. Yes. He's new to everything pretty much. Yes. But the team will take care of him. And people got to realize, yeah. my, in my eyes, the 49ers are pretty much the same Super Bowl team that was there a few years ago with Christian McCaffrey. And I'm going to say that I'm going to harp on that. Mm-hmm. This weekend, we'll shut everything down. The Eagles were the pick. The Eagles' defense is coming. But the 49ers' offense is going to be all over the place. The Eagles got to stop them from scoring. We already know they're going to go after the quarterback. Their, their pass rush is ridiculous. Eagles pass yeah. rush is ridiculous. So, to me, it's going to come down to the Eagles' secondary deciding the game. Um, the Bengals and the Chiefs, I believe it is. That's what it is. I was just um, about to say, we got to leave. We left out the Chiefs. The Mahomes is not 100%. He's not 100%. No, he's not. So, he's if not. I was a gambling man, I would take the Bengals as the under on the point spread. If they were mm-hmm. Lord, But, yeah. Lord, you got to lock down. You yeah. got to lock down that, yeah. that, that, that dynamo. Dynamo. like you're going to do. We already expect that loss. But what we're going to do for insurance is take this lower bet or take them underdogs, which would be the best. <laughs> Even though they was in the Super Bowl last year, they're supposed to be the damn favorites. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're supposed to be the damn favorites because they're right there you gotta, again. You so, got to lock down Kelsey, man, and that's the thing. You got to lock so, down Kelsey. I, I, I got to ask you. All the I have such a problem with this. Yeah. Every week. That's t- every week. Do you see the numbers Kelsey puts up every week? Every That's year. the whole thing. Yo. And I always praise guys like, you know, um, Jason Witten for what he was contributing. Yes. And <laughs> was it Gonzalez and, you know, Shannon Sharps of the world and all that. But Travis Kelsey, what the every hell, man? Year. <laughs> every week, every like, year. You just yeah. It's not always open. They were sweating Gronk. We were sweating Kelsey. Yes, yeah. too. Now, let's keep it 1,000. The top two tight ends in the NFL are in their championship divisions. Kelsey and yeah. Kittle. Kittle, and Kittle. Yes. Kittle ain't been Kittle's hurt. A... Nope. Kittle is just as good as Kelsey. Yeah. So your scary I Super Bowl is the 49ers and the Chiefs. Your I agree Super Bowl is the 49ers and the Bengals. Think about it. You got a bunch of yourselves. The Eagles are sitting right there. Everybody got to get past the Eagles. And yeah. you got two of the top teams, two of the top three AFC teams all season. We don't know what's going to happen this weekend. No. 
I did no. my bill check before I came to bed. Before I came, when I came home today, Shout out to the case. I'm pretty sure everybody's buying out before this week is up. Stop playing. Oh, oh. oh my goodness! All right, definitely, man. Um, the one one person I'm going to tell you who's going to be watching intently the three o'clock game, Mr. Tom Brady, because if Purdy looks real bad. That allows him to drop right in there. They're going to drop ship him for next season to San Francisco. To my Brady? I'm talking about Brady. I can see it. Mm. I'm talking about Brady. Because you know what is MO? It's kind of like LeBronish. Let me get a stack team. Come there. Boom, boom, boom. I, I, yep. I think we talked about that. I can see him going to 49ers. I can see him. I can yeah. see him going to 49ers. I think he's from out there, ain't he? Yeah, he's from out there. Yeah. Guess who else is from out there? Aaron Rodgers. Ain't he? Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that's you know? right. <clears throat> Listen. Hey, hey, Ron. <laughs> Nathaniel Hackett coming to the Jets. I don't know if he said he could deliver Tom, um, uh, Aaron Rodgers. He could. If he does, we had the Jets will have another aging Packer quarterback. Yeah, I'll tell I was say that. Yeah. Who is supposedly is talking about he's ready to mentor Zach Wilson. Oh. Yep. What about Mike? He's wanting to put that work in and you got something. But it's gonna cost the Jets fifty nine season. The Jets will pay for it because they got a young core team. Yeah. Um yeah, I see you over there. She tripped. <laughs> now here's the question with that. What are they gonna do with Flacco? Because Flacco was actually all right. Excuse me, all right for a couple of games. Jeez was good. Yeah he was. He on, was. Flacco Flacco was good for hey. him, and we ain't heard much from him. I think Mike White and Zach Wilson is gonna be the future of that franchise and whoever else they could bring in. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm just I, I, I don't just, know either. <laughs> this is just interesting. Just did good this season. Yeah, they just did good this season. Yeah, yeah, they did better the previous season. That's a plus. Um, and then Flacco, Flacco kind of looked good, like his former self. You know, when he was out there when they played the um the Raiders this season, was it? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, epic game there. Yeah, man. Um, as we segue. Joe, what's what's happening this weekend with combat sports? Well, let's formulate this. Put this in a little small bubble here real quick. Here you go. Um, yo, so this weekend, <laughs> there's a lot of MMA stuff. There is no UFC. You see the background here? This was last weekend. Um, first time in three years, well, since the pandemic. Uh, they took the trip to Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Really good event. The Brazil crowd was in it from the beginning. At the end, though, they weren't. Um, Brazil, the Brazilian guys took some L's. Wow. Mauricio Shogun retired. Um, he had his last fight, ended in a matter of uh, under like a minute or so, two minutes or so. Um, lost to a young guy from the Ukraine. Uh, uh, Davidson Figueredo, who was the flyweight champion, the undisputed flyweight champion, had the fourth encounter with this guy, Brandon Moreno, who's on the other side here next to Jamal Hill. Um, uh, Moreno won the fight in the third round um, due to a doctor stoppage. Other than that, had the doctor stoppage not happened, I think Figueredo would have definitely been fully outclassed. Is the fourth encounter due to, well, it was the draw first fight, second fight Moreno won. Figueredo won the third, so it was a fourth. The first time ever uh, rivalry went to four fights in the UFC history. So that happened. And then Jamal Hill, the young man on this side here, mm -hmm. he beat Glover Teixeira in a five-round decision for the light heavyweight title. By the time this fight had finally ended, the Brazilian crowd was out of there. Um, 
word on the street is that the ticket prices were a little they they hiked up the ticket prices but mm -hmm. also i think it was because a lot of the uh brazilian the brazilian favorites that they looked forward to seeing were taking losses Right. Other than that, Jessica Andrade beat the stuffings out of Lauren Murphy for three <laughs> straight rounds. That fight is ugly. Um, you could check the highlights on YouTube. People have talked about it. It's controversial. I won't get too in deep with that. Um, who else fought on the card? I'm trying to remember. Um, I don't forget. Oh yeah, the Bonfim brothers, two guys from Brazil. Right. who are pretty famous. They came out. They shined. Both of them got some wins. One of them beat a young prospect by the name of Terrence McKinney, knocked him out, knocked him out cold with a switch knee. The other one got a win in like 49 seconds by submission. Good fights all around. Okay? Right. So that's what happened. Now, this weekend, ta Um, we got one Friday fight. That's going to happen tomorrow early in the morning. Yeah, if you're if you're one of those early birds, man, you can catch that at 7:30 a.m. Catch that live on YouTube. YouTube is great. Well, they're one the company, the organization, nice enough to give out a good portion of their fights live for free on YouTube, so you can watch that at 7:30 a.m. Really long list of fights. A lot of uh, it's gonna be a mix up of mixed martial arts fights with kickboxing and Muay Thai fights. They've been dabbling, and they've been doing pretty well for themselves, um, so much so that in a few months, they'll be diving up into uh, U.S. territory for the first time. Muay I think it'll be was it March or May. Yeah, so Muay they'll be making their first event in Colorado. It'll be a rematch, the trilogy bout between um, their flyweight champ, Mar uh, Adriano Moraes, and the former UFC flyweight champ, um, now current flyweight champ, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. That's the mm -hmm. guy who at one time he had a, a crazy record, 11 title defenses or something like that. And right. really dynamic, super dynamic guy. Really quick, crazy combinations, nice wrestler, full-fledged um, total mixed martial artist there. Um, but the one Friday fights, that's going to be on Friday early morning if you're interested they got the pfl challenger series week one starts on fubo tv download it download the app and you can watch it is it important to watch it if you're really like knee deep in pfl i guess you could do go ahead and do that but um if not you could wait till the the um till the season officially starts the 2023 2024 season well, the 2023 season, I should say, starts. Um, because then by then, they'll probably release the um, those challenger fights on the YouTube, the PFL YouTube channel. But um, good good showing. A couple upcoming guys, people around the world, some former people you see in the UFC, maybe some in one. But they come out there, they try to get signed, and then you have somebody that shows up for the tournament. Um, also on Saturday, there's LFA uh, 151 um, live in uh, Cajamar, Sao Paulo, Brazil, headlined by a pretty nice tournament fight between Jose Delano, who's 12-2, and two, I guess Gabriel Santos. Um, that's a featherweight fight. Mm -hmm. You have the LFA Vincus strawweight title. As Julia Palastri, who's ten and three, fights Brenda Godig, who's six and zero out of Argentina. Right. Um, so it'll be pretty much a lot of Brazilians. She's the only non-Brazilian on that card. Um. Yeah, the only non-Brazilian there is Godig. Yeah. Other than that, everybody else is Brazilian, which is um kind of crazy, but it is what it is. <laughs> right. It's but in Brazil, though, right? For Saturday. Um, well, it's besides... In Brazil, right? Huh? It's in Brazil, right? It's what? The fight is in Brazil? Yeah, it's in Brazil. Yeah. The whole event is live in Brazil. You can catch that on UFC Fight Pass if you're a subscriber. Um, yeah, it's it's not bad. I, bought, I, I purchased UFC Fight Pass last year. It was half off. 
So out of the 99.99, it was 49.99. They had the little deal, so I caught that at the right time. Right. So ha ha. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. So mine's are still running through, but you know they have the the Royal Rumble. If you're an you know, interested wrestling fan, you know Royal Rumbles every year. This one may be um, pretty special because we got a lot of good returns from Word of Ear, you know, and the the dirt sheet folks. Um, there's some surprise signings, some surprise returns, some one night only um, showings that we're gonna see there at the Royal Rumble, maybe. Right. Um, but it, it'll be a good turnout, you know. Um, we'll see what happens with with Vince coming back. I think it's gonna be big. So we, we'll see. We'll see. I hope it's not gonna be bad because last year's Royal Rumble was not nothing special. It was kind of they kind of dropped the ball. So hopefully they make up for it this year. But boxing, there is a fight this weekend. You can catch this fight on ESPN Plus. If you're an ESPN Plus subscriber, I kind of recommend folks to get ESPN Plus because you catch your boxing, you catch your football, catch your baseball, catch your college games. There's good content, good documentaries and shows. There's the MMA. You got the PFL and the UFC. But the boxing. Gotta love the boxing. And the big king is showing up to defend his light heavyweight title as Artur Beterbiev, the undefeated Russian, faces England's top star, one of England's top stars, uh, Anthony Yard, um, for the WBC, WBO, IBF, World light heavyweight titles. Why is this a big deal? Arda Bia better be of is undefeated. He is a monster. 18 fights, 18 wins, 18 knockouts. Wow. Whoa. A monster. This is the guy that uh the man who was chasing the dream in Canelo Alvarez was trying to get up there and face. Unfortunately for him, he got halted. He got halted by Dimitri Bivol. Now, Bivol's the guy who's trying to get his fights in and looking to meet this man, Artur Beterbiev, unify the titles. Right. Yes, sir. He's going against Yard. Yard is 23, two, 22 knockouts, two losses. One of those losses is a split decision. The other one... It's a knockout loss to that man Kovalev. Y'all guys remember Kovalev, right? Kovalev was out here start starching people too. Yes. <laughs> you know, then then you know he got old and he took advantage of him. It is what it is. But that card's gonna be pretty dope. Um they also have a world flyweight title fight between Artem Delakian, who's 21 and 0, against David Jimenez, who's 12 and 0. Then the rest of the fights are good upcoming boxers from the area, from England. Um, so, you know, for ESPN, it's pretty dope because you always showcase the area's fighters, upcoming prospects, whatnot. Um, it's a good watch and learning experience for folks that don't um, relate. You know, you, you're trying to learn uh, boxing. You're trying to get, you know, the gist of what's happening in the boxing realm. Do watch those cards because you see the upcoming stars. And, you know, no, the future, oh, snap, that guy, he's about to do some things. But that's what's going on this weekend. Um, there'll be no UFC until the following week. Uh, two pivotal things are happening in that same week. Uh, Amanda Serrano's boxing that, that, that following weekend. Amanda Serrano's boxing. Alicia Bumgarner's the co-main event on that card. Um all the cards are stacked on the Bellator card, Bellator Russia card between Ryan Bader and Fedor Emelianenko. What is to be Fedor's last fight? Um, the whole card is Russia versus the world, pretty much. Wow. And um, it is going to be in, is it going to be in Russia, if I remember correctly? But I know, yes, I think it's going to be in Russia. But uh, no, 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 no. It is in California. But it is Russia, pretty much um, the majority of it is Russia versus the world. 
it was supposed to be in Russia, but I guess they changed it. Yeah, they changed it. But that's going to be Bader versus Emelianenko for Bader's heavyweight title. Um, Johnny Eblen, who I'm very high on, um, he was a good prospect. Then he outclassed Gegard Musazi. Insane. He's fighting Anatoly Tokov, who's 31-3, and three, a mastermind in madness in the cage. Super technical, hella good um, grappler, nasty KOs as well as submissions. So that's going to be pretty fun to watch. The rest of the card is pretty dope. My homie Brendan Ward, he's coming back. He's trying to get his his uh climb back to the top. You know, he was out for a while, jail, drug addiction, trying to come back and reform. So it's pretty dope. And the rest of the card is pretty dope too, man. Um, good fights there. But and you know, the UFC is gonna be on at the same time, but it's a weird time slot on ESPN Plus because it starts at 10 p.m. Oh, really? The prelims start at 10 p.m. Wow. The main card starts at 1 o'clock in the morning. So that morning? means 3 o'clock in the morning is going to? 4 o'clock it'll end. Jeez. By 4 or maybe a little bit more than 4. Why is that, you ask? Because they have a list of Chinese fighters who will be fighting on the card. And you know the UFC and Dana have been stretching to get that China audience. They've had it for quite a bit. So to entertain them, they've had a low-key show on, is it UFC Fight Pass? Yeah, Road to UFC. That featured okay. a lot of the Orient, the, the, a lot of fighters from the area there. So to catch the Chinese crowd, the Chinese fans, they aired it at that specific time. So they are able to view it live. So it'll be like yeah. morning, afternoon time, afternoon time for them, afternoon, night time for them, and it'll be morning for us here. So we got to suffer a little bit in the U.S. Fair enough, though, because we got a lot of the early cards while right. they got to stay up late at night, early right. morning. So it's only a fair trade. But that's all that's happening, man. Thanks gotcha. for asking. I'm done there. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, this is Ted Hitch with Late Night Parents. We're with Mr. B and Tony D., um, I'll quickly segue to this article that we repurposed and, you know, one of the worst elements of Twitch is watching, I mean, we all use Twitch. Yes, we know it's Amazon, but one of the worst elements of Twitch is watching a creator. You know, you get excited. And you get interrupted by an advertisement throughout, you know, a key second of the stream. It's additionally annoying to start out watching a creator and having to take care of three minutes of advertisements earlier than, you know, than the service will allow you to. So like with YouTube, they'll make you watch that first advertisement and then you can kind of tunnel through the second one after five seconds. So Twitch itself is seeking to re repair these issues, um, you know, through various summits. There was a blog post that was um, that Twitch posted, and basically they're looking to go picture in picture. They're looking to streamline some of these. Um, they're looking to streamline some of these advertisements. Um, I think they're trying to make it a little bit more palatable for the creator um, because, you know, it's all about, you know, these mid-rolls, you know, because through the advertisement, that's how, hey, we get paid. So I think it's a start in the right direction because I'm sure they get all different types of complaints. Uh, I mean, think of when we watch a sporting event on TV. They don't want to pull you from the information, I mean, from the entertainment, so they'll give you picture-in-picture -picture advertisement. So I guess we're finally getting smart, but I think it's setting us up for plans to launch Twitch Turbo, which is going to provide an ad-free viewing experience later this year. So what does that mean? Twitch Turbo, Twitch Turbo, Twitch Turbo, Turbo. So I'm thinking 
that means there's going to be a pay for option. There we go. Um, we'll jump into the comments real quick on this. And Helen says, I honestly believe the reason there are so many ads on Twitch is to encourage you to subscribe to the creator. Yeah. Subscribing stops the ads. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know Tony's a, a Twitch user. Used to be you were a Twitch user or you kinda a little bit. I gotta get back on. I gotta get back on. What's your take I was on? I get back on. Yeah. What, what's your What's your take on the way they're going to do advertisements and everything else like that? You for it? You against it? You're like, you know what? Who cares? Um, if they want to go about it that way, they can go about it that way. Um, I know they're not going to get rid of the. Whew, okay, I did. Okay, I was about to sneeze. Um, yeah, they need the ads, man. They need the ads, but they're going to go about it some way. And if you're going to pay for it, hey, that just cuts away your, you know what I mean? You don't got to watch the ads, but you pay for you pay for the way to remove the ads. That right. just covers for the ad time there. They need the ads. So either you're going to sit there and suffer through the ads because they got to make they got to make money somehow. Besides your streaming, so it, it happens all the time. It happens everywhere. So you know you got to deal with it. I tell you firsthand. I'm an ESPN Plus subscriber. I never thought that I'd be paying for ESPN Plus and still got to deal with ads. You know what I mean? <laughs> I about to say but here we are. Here <laughs> we are. You know what I mean? Like what the hell? So do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to do. So Helen says, also, only creators who are Twitch affiliates have ads on their streams. Mm. And also, only affiliates and partners who can be subscribed to. Oh, interesting. So, Tony, you're an affiliate? I just got it recently. Ironically. Do you see all the wonderful benefits of being an affiliate on Twitch? Um, They need your tax information. I don't think I'll be making that type of money. I have tried to fill it out. We had complications with it. I was trying to work it last weekend. I'm not sure what's going on with it. But a lot of people that I know who I feel it. I mean, the biggest person that I know, the biggest streamer on Twitch that we all know together would be Randy. And Randy's got bigger numbers than all of us. Randy's got numbers than they combined with all of us. I've seen Hella's numbers be up. And to me, I mean, I'm going to try it. Because a bunch of us connected with that platform and Twitter when we left the previous platform. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I do try to stream up there, let everybody know I'm still around, I'll still do my thing or whatever. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to see how it goes. It sucked though, you want to ask any possible quick more, you trying to hear something? Yeah, I agree, Rick. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Right. The replay is not there. When it had yeah. Yeah. The replay is not there. Yeah. Helen says he still hasn't filled out the form okay OBKB. nudge. <laughs> and I will play naive. I will say FFS. Is that like a, a wrestling league or an uh, 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 MMA league? <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. What isn't being said is when we did try to fill out the form, there's an error that we couldn't find an answer to. Okay. Oh. Okay. But, but I think I asked you the other night. I think I asked you the other night, and you can correct me. Mm -hmm. Um, was this a 1099? Some type of tax payer identification for anyone in there. It's like an agreement. You sign your name on it, but it went to the signature. And we tried going through this, going through that. I'll try Q and A on this week. No, you don't cuss, Rick. We know. Um, I oh guess it remains God. to be to to be seen. Hey, I I have one other topic. Um, I just want to hit on it. Uh, uh. 
study reveals the most injured NFL team from the 2021-2022 season. Ooh. Ugh. I mean, we – what was it, like three weeks ago with DeMar Hamlin? Yes. When the yeah. world was watching that on um, – Live television. Live television. Yep. I, I – Dude, I mean, I just go back to thinking we watched this on live tell, and I was, you know, not just me, but other people were like, Did this guy just died on TV. Looked like it. You know, so we went from one hit to someone being worked on, you know, 10 minutes to him receiving $12 million in his GoFundMe. Did it hit 12? It's at 12. Yeah. It's that at 12 million. Skyrocketed, man. It's at 12 million. So, um, hang on one second. I just want to go to, here we go. Uh, real quickly, we'll go through it. Yeah, you know, we love football. Um, yeah. Health and safety issues are out there. You know, everyone's seen concussion. But it's like it's like the train wreck that you, you know, it's like reality TV. And you just can't take your eyes off of it. Um, NFL injuries over the years. Supposedly, 2022, um, injuries have gone down. Stay for play. For the most part, it's supposed to, but what I am noticing is they're going a lot of leg injuries. Yeah. Yeah. We saw that with Tony Pollard, and then we also saw that with, uh, with the good Patrick Mahomes. That fall was very similar. Yes. To, 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 yeah. to Joe Theismann? The Joe Theismann one, didn't his leg go backwards? Yeah, you're right. I was, I was thinking. Was Gohe, his knee got hit backwards. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With like an ostrich, yeah. with like a flamingo on me. So yeah, this one they went, they went to fall on them, and their leg got caught underneath the body. When you tackle somebody, you don't have to. I mean, you're trying to pull them down, and I got it. Mm-hmm. But I watched it, and I'm seeing the same type of tackle. And I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Seeing there was another game. I think one of the guys on the Bills, he got tackled. The dude was trying to twist his leg after they was already on the ground. Well, yeah, they tried to break each other's limbs. Yeah. That ain't so, cool. Number of Man, injuries not- reported continue to drop from 2015, uh, 494 injuries that season, to a total of 204 injuries. So that's a 50% decrease. And we could see it in NFL injuries over the years. Uh, most injured teams. Go as followed. Most injured is the Tennessee Titans. The Giants are right behind that. Then the Patriots. Wow. Broncos, Ravens, Cardinals, Lions, Saints, Browns, and Cowboys. Most injured. Yeah. And least injured going from 10 to 1. Bears, Falcons, Bengals, Steelers, Packers, Vikings. Jaguars, Bills, Eagles, Chiefs. That's interesting. That is interesting. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. As much it's, as they give injury reports, we don't hear about all the players that get hurt, I don't think. No, we don't. We don't. Not as much. Most injured NFL players. Jason Pierre Paul. Blew his fingers off. Yeah, but that was um, – wasn't he messing around with, with firecrackers was, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah he was. He was. <laughs> Justin Houston? Dwayne Brown? Jadavion Clowney? Yeah, he was. He was a yeah, Texas I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And Teron Armistead? Hmm. Um. The final thoughts on this document, is they say injuries in the NFL are going to continue to happen as they have since its inception. They're not preventable. 
they're doing they're doing what they can to make improvements to health and safety precautions. But I mean, the game is barbaric. It's the game we love to watch. It's like like I said, we can't stop watching this this train wreck. Yeah. Yeah, very true, man. Very true. And then so, after this season, you know, after this season, seeing what happened to a uh, poor Tua, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Painful. Just think about it. Remember, I mean, the Sunday game and then the Thursday game, and I was just like, "What? Well, why is he out here?" For for that for the incentives. Yeah, and then just weeks before we hit these uh, official playoff games, boom. Again. Thank you, Helen. We're going to get you and True affiliate next. All of us should have been by now. No great consolation to the people who did get injured. Oh, well, less people got injured this year. Cheers. Great. Thanks, mate. Lying there broken on a hospital bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it says up, you man. can check out anytime, uh, but you can never leave. Right. And, oh, yeah, and Nick see, Foles. Nick Hotel Foles California. got cracked this season, this season too. Who? I guess the Giants. Nick Foles. <sighs> Remember, Nick Foles got cracked, and then yes. homie made snow angels next to his body. Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, man. Brutal game, man. It's a yes. brutal game, but like you said, yes. you can't turn away, man. I mean, because after this, think about it. And after this weekend, then we got in two weeks. I mean, are we all in on the NBA or are we waiting for MLB? I mean, it's normally after the Super Bowl, we're all in the NBA, but we yeah. also got the XFL and the AFL coming up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Spring football. We got to look at that. Yeah, I want to see. I will the XFL last time we had the XFL, that first go round, it was a lot of football. That's a lot. Yeah. Of when we had the AAF, that was a lot of football. It was a lot of football. It was a lot of football. But uh, the bigger Richard question was, is was it too much? Was it football? At that time, I felt like it was at one point, but we wanted something. We needed something. We did need something. Okay. Everybody hates when football is off the air because everybody watches it. But the XFL was not drawing the crowd. This is going to be their third attempt. The AFL yes. this is not their first attempt. I think this mm-hmm. is their second. So we got to see how it goes. Now, guys want to play football. Everybody wants to have an audience. Everybody wants the sport. It's going to be up to the football fans to watch it and to keep it going. To watch it. Right. The very first XFL game ever. We was yeah. all in. Yeah, it hasn't been racist. The question is, weeks four, five, and six, will we be there? That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So we got to see how it goes. Um, couple of big names coaching. I did look at a couple yeah, of sure. those. I don't know a bunch of those dudes, but Heinz Ward is coaching. Um, mm-hmm. somebody else, I forgot. I saw a couple of names I was familiar, but I'm 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 gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out. Final question I have for Mr. B. All this talk about WWE being sold. Give me your top three choices of who do you believe will purchase the WWE? Top three? Top three. Or if you don't have a top three, give me give me your one. Give me the the well, the, the entity. The entity, yeah. Well, thinking about it, Saudi Arabia. I'm thinking because they're looking to buy up everything. They're buying a lot. Yes. They're low key yes. buying a lot of stuff now. If you're paying attention, um, they are looking. They are looking to shop. Shop heavy. Right. Uh, they have the uh, who's a little group here and there. They're trying to um couple things here and there they're trying to get. Uh, if I was that person... Saudi Arabia Investment Fund is the company. Yes. Is the yes. air quote yes. company. Yes, the right. entity. Yeah, the entity. <laughs> so, uh, that's what you got to do. You got to do the entity. It's the entity. The entity. You know? Yeah. They do their, their little thing here and there. Um, 
Yeah, because they 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 getting a lot. They 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 getting a lot of boxing on the over there in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you know they're doing uh, the uh, live golf. See, they get yeah some. They getting golf. They're looking for golf. Live golf. They may be looking for tennis to come out over there. Yeah. Um. They even possibly they're possibly looking for uh, the Formula One races mm -hmm. uh, to to happen out there as well. Wow. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of good. Um, there's a lot of good space to do a lot of things out there, man. Um, a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. Um, but I could see them doing that. The entity. Uh, we could get. Who else? Endeavor. Because, uh, you know, Endeavor Dana has a relationship with Vince and Triple H. Um. They've done dealings beforehand in getting the services of one man by the name of Brock Lesnar. They have worked alongside, you know, hand in hand in the transition in between MMA and uh, wrestling for a lot of guys, past and present. So I could see, you know, um, Endeavor possibly, WME, IMG, um, those guys working possibly with them. They talk about uh the possibility of Tony Khan buying but would they I, I don't know man. you think that's smoking mirrors ah you think that's smoking mirrors I think that's kind of smoking mirrors I think it's kind of smoking mirrors <laughs> I think it's it's it'll be if Tony Khan was to buy it'll be too much for Tony to handle Tony got a mess as right. it is um he has a mess. he got too much a lot of mess egos there's money, of course, but how many of those guys would he keep over his own guys? That's one thing. He's going to be getting rid of his own guys to be buying a lot of those WWE guys, and that's going to be an issue. But I see that, and probably Warner Brothers Discovery, maybe. I see I'm getting, but other than that, that's it. Those are my three, my possible four, three, four. Well, I'll say three because I'm not really thinking the Tony Khan thing, but yeah. Warner Brothers Discovery, Endeavor, The Entity. There you go. I'm just going to go with one. I'm going to say Comcast. And I've been saying this as long as I can remember. Comcast, which the parent company to NBC, mm -hmm. Peacock. Yes. Makes sense. That I, think it's a, yeah. made. I think it's Taylor yeah. made. I think it's Taylor made. They're already giving them Peacock, wasn't it? Six hundred yeah, million dollars a year. Yeah. A year? a year. A yeah. year for the library. For the pay per views. Super strong. Yes. Super strong. Super strong. Mm hmm. A year. Yeah. A year. You gotta. You gotta remember, Tony. These guys tried the WWE network. The WWE network started faltering. Then Peacock yep. said, "Hey, buddy, we'll we'll work with you guys." Yep. Boom. Yep. <laughs> like, yo. yep. And Peacock is free. We used to pay for WWE network. Listen, that's the whole thing. Everything hey, is on streaming. Okay, okay. Everything is on streaming. That's what it is. So when you get streaming, you got the yeah. advertisements. Okay, fine, yep. cool. I got that. I got that. And Peacock, you can put everywhere. Peacock, Pluto, Fubo, like you said. Yeah. Um, 2B TV should jump on it. It's free. Yeah. Like 2B is free. 2B, yeah. Pluto. 2B, Crackle, Pluto. Yes, Crackle. Hell, Roku. All of them. Free. You know what about that before? Free. Free. Yeah. And everybody pick up a gap. Yeah. Yep. A, lot, a couple couple of these uh shows, you know, show up on there, on those sites there. Bellator is one of those those folks that be on uh, the was it Pluto Pluto yeah. and uh, yeah Pluto got the Star Trek channels I'll be stuck yeah oh my god yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same same I don't even blame you man I said, but no that's why I can watch some DS now for three hours <laughs> oh yeah man yo we're almost at the hour mark oh god. So we're gonna have to shut this down. Um, Joe, where can we find you? 
streaming or where can we find if you have any written work, your thoughts, all the above? Um, catch my thoughts through tweets on Twitter. My thoughts, my re my retweets and all that stuff. My live play by plays when fights happen. Catch all those on Twitter, man. Whenever a fight's happening, I'm tweeting about it. Um, catch me. The new profile name is New Year Same B at Mr. B 1986. It is a picture of one of my favorite characters out of Naruto, Rock Lee, practicing drunken jujitsu, drunken uh karate, drunken master style karate. With the Henny bottle. I'm sorry to mention the Henny <laughs> bottle, but it is what it is. Um, I'm on OK Live. As I said, whenever fights are happening, I'm streaming them there. Mr. B. I have a profile picture. I, I usually put, you know, ladies of MMA. So the current one is Laura Sanko because I had another account. But unfortunately, for some reason, I got locked out. So I had to make this one. Is a picture of Laura Sanko in the gym. You'll appreciate it. Um... I'm getting back. I'm getting on my thing, though. I'm poker char, man. Got on poker char a couple times this week, man. Um, Tony was there for one of them. I got, you know what I mean? I get a little group, but I got to get the time to be out here. I noticed you got to get a time because if you don't have a time, a set time, you know, people may not show up as much. So I got to get that down back, down path. I got to watch your boy, um, the guy TK, the artist. That's a funny cat. It and I don't know if it's that. yes, he did. He saw he bust out some freestyles, man. But I don't know if it's by coincidence or what. Mm -hmm. This man grew up around the same neighborhood I grew up at. Oh okay. wow. I lived on Bainbridge 193rd and 194th. He was by Briggs, like around was it Briggs, Marion, Marion area area there. But then he told me he was by 173rd and uh, Fordham. And I'm like, bro, I was right there. And he started naming spots. And I'm like, get out of here. You know Yo, that's like? crazy. You sound the same way with him that I sounded when me and Taylor was talking about where we was from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, like yo, that's crazy. From where I was at when I was a kid. <laughs> yo, yeah, man. And I'm like, yo, this is insane. Bro, and he naming the spots, and we talking about like, yeah, man. And he talked about the sandwich spot on one ninety four there, and I'm like, yeah, but like one ninety fifth area there, I'm like, yeah, yeah and the you, whole you, block you with the, all the gangs, and I'm like, yeah, man, the, the the gangs hold down like four or five blocks straight through Briggs. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like this small world, man. It is. So I and appreciate that. Spread yeah. out all over the place. A bunch of us grew up in certain areas. And didn't really know each other. Even in the neighborhood of Queens that I was born in, you'd be surprised how many blocks was right there where me and Ted were pretty much kids at. Yep. That's yep. crazy. And I promise you, there's at least a thousand of us that don't even know each other. I know. I know. <laughs> at least a thousand of us. And we all from right there. Yep. Words, man. So, so, yeah, man. I appreciate that, though. But, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 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 I, I just, before I hand it over to Tony, I want to give a big shout out to WRAQ. It's an affiliate in upstate New York and also Global Community Radio, which is out there on the interwebs. Oh, nice. Um, so as we can see, Mr. B is out on those, those mean internet streets. Mm-hmm. Yes, Joan, where can we find you? Follow that Twitter handle. Y'all know everywhere else already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tagging everything through Twitter in the first place. Follow Listen. that Twitter handle. We got a bottom screen. You saved me five minutes. We good. <laughs> I'm going. To, <laughs> I'm going to go to a previous screen and grab the where we can find when Tony just goes ninety hundred miles an hour and he just reels off that's like cruise control. 10 usernames that's cruise control I'm telling you man <laughs> and he talks control. about me and my combat sports bro Dude, that's crazy you and your syllables i tried to learn it from you t-o-n-y-t-o-n-7-2 on twitch t-o-n-y-t-o-n-7-2 on instagram t-o-n-y-t-o-n-1-6-3 on twitter 
T O N Y T O N one nine seven two three on TikTok. Tony D that original on Linktree. You're gonna find me on Mixcloud. I'm on Precocial like JoJo. Big up to Carl for putting me on over there. I done met some crazy folks, met some good folks. Like you said, TK dogs, big up TK, TK. If you see this, we got you, man. I told you, we're putting you out there for real. Uh, what else we got? That's enough. Y'all know where to find me. You heard about me. You see me doing this for about two years, my man Ted. We doing it. We doing it. We doing it. We doing it. Ted, I see you. You ain't slick. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't slick. <laughs> Yo. Oh he's super, my God. He's super tight, that comment. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he did it. it, it it's, it's the uh, Kamala Harris moment. Kamala Harris moment. She was like, we did it, Joe. We did it. Yeah, she became president. Like, They're still mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my goodness. Uh, as always, appreciate you gentlemen more than you guys would ever know. Gives me a good laugh after a, another uh, hectic week at work. Yeah, I had a wild day at work myself. Yo, and so I look forward to this. So we're going to wrap it up here. This is Ted Hicks, Late Night Parents. Want to definitely thank um, Joe, a.k.a. Mr. B, Tony D, and also Helen, Sadie, Rick Costa. Um, I want to make sure Jeeves, big shout out to him, and, you know, everyone in the chat, because you are also a part of this. Yes, yes. So we want to definitely say thank you and peace. Peace. Peace.